The announcement of Uganda's first COVID-19 case caused a little panic in many a people here. However, the Ministry of Health had now come to reality with the fact that it has to deal with the infection by all means. The lockdown was quickly instituted to help in understanding the disease, according to the president. But researcher at Makerere University College of Health Sciences, Dr. Olive Kosinje, who is also well versed with the medical emergency systems, says we have since dropped the ball as regards the lockdown. We've spent a whole lot of time, we've spent the entire lockdown period focused on trying very hard to prevent infections coming into the country and we've not done enough to prepare the healthcare system within the country to cope with the infection. Which is why only a couple of days ago it emerged that um, regional referral hospital, Lira, uh, that the response to the pandemic was under junior staff, that they did not have sufficient supervision from senior people that were more experienced, the health workers didn't have sufficient support. So I think we've We've squandered the opportunity that we had, that the infection hadn't really hit us and that we had sufficient time to prepare. Uganda has embarked on easing the lockdown. However, the number of infected people is also rising. We have so far passed the 500 mark and we are yet to see more. In the last address to the nation on COVID-19, President Museveni assured the public on our readiness to handle the disease. I'm confident that uh, whatever, in, in whatever direction the, the disease evolves, we can overcome it. Why am I confident? We have quite a number of doctors. Within Uganda, forget about those ones who went for a CAO. I was I don't count to those. They went to treat, uh, to treat, to treat others. But the ones who are here, there are 4,372 in, in, in government and private hospitals. If it became, if it became necessary, we can mobilize uh, this. And then we have got 70,161 nurses. Uh, this is very crucial because uh, one doctor in one shift can look after a 300-bed hospital. We have created the hospital bed capacity of 2,000. These are the ones dedicated to, uh, to this virus. The hosp hospital beds are more, but those dedicated to this are 2,000 now. But we can quickly scale up the treatment by building tents in some places and if it became necessary, we could scale up to even 40,000 beds. We seem to be making it up as we go along. How many beds do we need? And about how many doctors do we need? And how many television sets per bed? We, need, we don't seem to have a roadmap. And I'm telling you the expertise is here to draw up this roadmap so that we reduce on the guesswork. It was in the first couple of weeks, everybody in the world was saying, we don't know what this virus is going to do. We don't know how it's going to pan out. I think that time is long gone. We have had sufficient time to prepare. We know exactly where our, our health facilities are in this country. We have only 14 uh, regional referral hospitals in the country. So there was no excuse for those 14 hospitals to not be adequately prepared, considering that we've been planning and preparing for this for the last few months. After the outbreak, the Ministry of Health put out a call for an emergency recruitment drive for additional health workers. The ministry at the time proposed to engage 210 health workers for a six-month period. Dr. Kobo Sinje describes this as a knee-jerk reaction to a system that has been mismanaged for long. We need to have re trained, recruited and made sure that we retain them because we remunerate them appropriately. We motivate them to stay in this health workforce. We've spent the entire lockdown period chasing every truck driver that came in with a positive test. But we really haven't taken care of all of those things. We, and as I said, many of them are not things we can fix in a day. I mean, if we didn't have 
um, laboratory technicians trained, if we didn't have nurses trained and in place, you can't snap them into place. Dr. Joel Okulo, who chairs the Medical and Dental Practitioners Board, says this shows that the health system is not fully employing all health workers available. COVID-19 has just been a wake-up call for us to see how we can maximally use the human resources that we have. And we have got plenty. For example, uh, we churn out about, what, 500, 600 doctors a year, so that the total number of doctors that are on record is something like 7,000, uh, but only about half of that are active in service. If you look at the number of nurses, they are about 70,000. And I think if those are deployed in this kind of setting, it should be enough to address uh, the problem of COVID. It is still not clear when COVID-19 will be completely wiped out. The former Director General of Health Services, Professor Francis Omaswa, has advised government to invest more in human resources, especially high-quality professionals. Make sure that our health training institutions are well-funded, are well-managed, so that the people who enter the training schools, who stay and graduate from the training schools, are prepared to be coming out as a skilled and compassionate health professionals. We have managers for health workers in the country, in the Ministry of Health. There is a vacancy there which has not been filled, to my knowledge, of health professional development, I think, commissioner. That position is very, very critical. It should be filled uh, with an appropriate person with skills to link disease burden to uh, health skills. Walter Mwesi J, NTV.